Hello and welcome to Access Sportsnet Lakers, driven by your Southern California Honda dealers. I'm Chris McGee, the Hall of Famer, big game James Worthy. We've got Allie Clifton, we got Trudell and Brez working the post game. Can't really sugarcoat it. Embarrassing loss for the Lakers, losing huge leads, not putting a Warriors team away when you had ample opportunities. And you can get away with that some nights, but it's going to come bite you many times in the NBA, and it did tonight, James. Yeah, it bit them tonight. Um, you know, they went against a team that, uh, you know, was absent, uh, you know, Clay Thompson, uh, a young team, a scrappy team. I was very impressed with uh, what Steve Kerr has done with this team. He got them motivated to play. Uh, but, yeah, the Lakers, uh, you know, when, when you have a chance to put it away and you don't, and I think what's happened over – uh, this span of wins, uh, they've, you know, uh, been used to playing a little bit slow and then turning it on, and they've taken care of business. But tonight, um, it just seemed like they were just flat. It seemed like they just couldn't respond to what Golden State was doing to them, not getting good shot opportunities, not connected defensively like they normally are. Um, and so, yeah, it was, a, it was a lackluster kind of a performance, particularly in the fourth quarter. What if I would have come to you before the uh, pregame show and said, hey, by the way, Allie, uh, Steph Curry's Stop. only going to go three for 12. <laughs> I would have stopped you right there. <laughs> Steph Curry's going to only go Wouldn't three for 12 <laughs> from three. The Lakers will lead by 19 in the first quarter, but they're going to lose the game. You know, I think that's what's think so I'm crazy? kind of, yeah, And the bench will play great. <laughs> yeah, crazy. Uh, I think that's probably what's so mind-boggling because after starting out the way they did and – were able to manage that 19-point yeah. lead in the first, you would have thought things were going towards the Lakers' way for the night. But I think what you also learn is what we've continued to preach. It's what they know inside that locker room is that they are the defending champs. And every single night, you are going to get your opponent's best shot. And also with that comes players who may outplay themselves. Yeah. I mean, Kelly Oubre is averaging 11 points this season. We're talking about how he, he can't even throw it into the ocean. And he has 23. 23. His season high. Pascal off the bench. Yeah. yeah. Ties his season high with 19. I mean, guys are just playing out of their minds. <laughs> so Andrew Miller, our graphics producer, he's, he's a Bay Area guy. Bay Area guy. He's a huge Warrior fan. We told him to build a fourth quarter collapse uh, full screen, and he did. And I think he did it with a smile on, on his face because <laughs> uh, it was a collapse, colossal collapse. Uh, the Warriors outscored the Lakers 34 to 21. Field goals were 14 of 23, 6 of 19. Lakers an embarrassing 1 for 9 from 3. But here's some other ones, James. They were up 9 with 5 minutes left in this game. They didn't yeah. score for over 4 minutes after that. They had 4 turnovers in the final few minutes. Warriors went on an 11-0 run. I, I mean, pick with... Get the defense going, layups, uh, you know, the bench players for Golden State out-hustled. There's things that we normally don't see, we saw uh, in the fourth quarter in particular. Yeah, I mean, this is a Warriors team, you know, minus Clay, as we mentioned. Draymond's getting back. Steph's getting back. It's a young team. They outscored the Lakers 67-49. Here's the thing, Allie. The Lakers are not going to be perfect. Right. I know we want them to be every single night, but the Warriors played harder tonight. 67-49 in the second half. You know, Bottom coming one. in, Steve Kerr made the point that they're just not in sync right now offensively. I think they turned the corner mm -hmm. of it tonight because I yeah. think at the end of the day, you mentioned how different the Warriors are to what mm -hmm. we're so accustomed to seeing. But their system, their style of play, and who they are going to be and want to be about – because you still have that guy, that dominant force in Steph Curry yep. running the show, they're still going to pass the ball. They're going to move that basketball offensively, and they're going to get after it on the defensive end of the floor. And when you put that all together and you continue to stick with that, good things will happen. And tonight, that's what happened for the Warriors. Yeah, and, and, and Frank said it. He said it early in this game when, when he said it to the team and, and when he was interviewed. Like, you can't let this team hang around because of that guy. And sure, yeah. Steph was two for 11 at, at the time, but he hits the big three uh, with a minute left to put them up five. Uh, Kelly Oubre, they had an interesting conversation about him. Reggie was saying, listen, he, you know, social media, fans around the NBA, he was supposed to be that guy to kind of fill the role when Clay uh, tore his Achilles, and, and he has really had an up and down rough season. Well, tonight he came to play. Uh, 23 points, 9 of 18, James. Well, you know, a guy who's been cold and hadn't been going his way, you always have to be aware of him. And, you know, Ali mentioned it early, too. They are the defending champions. They're going to get this every night. Yeah. Even from the worst teams mm -hmm. in the league, they're going to come out and play hard. So you, that's another dimension that the Lakers have to get used to. They didn't have that last year. They weren't defending champions. This year they are. 
Every night's going to be a big night. And they had an opportunity to win this game. They just didn't close it out. Surprised us tonight, James, though. MLK, uh, MLK Day in the NBA. It's, it's a big day. It's a national game. It's only on TNT. You're, you're right after an unbelievable Brooklyn yeah. game with Harden and KD in Milwaukee. And they built up a 19-point lead coming off of, what, six straight wins, five straight wins. They looked so good. And then it just kind of, they, they, they took their foot off the gas, Allie. Yeah, and when you do it against a team, as we've been talking about, who can really light it up, and once you knock down one and two, it becomes contagious. It, it's tough. It's tough to just flip the switch against every team, as Geter mentioned, but especially you don't want to do it, even if the Warriors are average right now, mm -hmm. you don't want to do it against a team like them because no. they're too capable. And, and when they put you on your heels and then the shots aren't falling, the one thing when you look at the Lakers coming into tonight in that five-game winning streak, the ball was moving on the mm -hmm. offensive end of the floor, 26 assists on average, and tonight just 23. Shots weren't falling. And you know what happens when shots aren't falling. It becomes tougher on the defensive end, and it makes you want to makes you want to it you need to dig in even more so deeper and you're doing it against a team that has caught fire yeah and the lakers got such poor shots down the stretch we were saying those final three minutes long twos no nothing in sync no actions and and, and what's interesting we're going to show you guys right here they're still in this game right shooter misses that free throw makes the second one they're down two. steph misses that layup the lakers get the ball with 12 seconds the indecision or, or whatever it's been since uh, since george floyd's death uh, a lot to our, our league and our players, and uh, it's, a great, it's a great source of pride for us to be the marquee game on, on my little team day. That's Frank, you've had so little time to practice, uh, even shoot rounds and such. Did having a weekend, you know, quote unquote, off, I know you did some practice, did, did that allow you to focus on anything from the first part of the season? Yeah, I mean, we, we really just uh, we, we used a couple of days to get caught up on, on rest. Uh, we've had some off days, and uh, yesterday's practice was really centered around, uh, you know, the details that go into trying to slow down a guy like Steph Curry and, uh, you know, just get that game plan further along. Um, and obviously, there's still a lot to implement throughout the course of the season. And, uh, you know, we'll continue to look, look for times to, to grow our, our offensive system and defensive schemes. Frank, I know you can only play the games that are on the schedule, but how have you felt uh, about your strength of schedule so far? And are you curious, even though you guys have been playing really well, are you curious to see how it could translate um, against some of these tougher teams coming up on the schedule? I mean, all these games are just a test of your habits. You know, um, whether you're playing against a, a, a great team or a team that's playing really well or a team with a poor record, you know, it, it doesn't matter. It's you're, you're trying to play to a standard and win as many games as you can. You know, we've, we've been opportunistic with uh, – you know, being able to play the Grizzlies without John Morant and and um, the Spurs without Lamarcus Aldridge, um, you know, in those those early road trips. Um, but again, like we, we try to try not to focus on the you know the strength of our opponent. You know, they're still gonna have five guys on the floor, and we gotta execute at a high level, high enough level to win. So, um, you know, just focusing on us. All right, there's Frank Vogel. So curious to see what he said about Steph Curry there. Are they going to treat him like they treated Harden and Dame in the playoffs last year and really aggressively trap? Or is it going to be kind of a hybrid of that since it's still early in the regular season? We'll see, and it'll tell the tale of the game tonight. All right, appreciate that, Mike. Good work. Uh, we'll talk to you later. All right, the development of Kyle right, Kuzma guys. is always a hot topic in Lakerland and during the Lakers' current win streak. Kuz is playing the consistent brand of ball that the purple and gold need from him for this team. Take a look at the numbers in Friday's win over the Pelicans. 11 points in 22 minutes, but look at the 11 rebounds. Three of four from three-point land. Efficiency. Following Sunday's practice, Koo spoke about his added attention to rebounding this season. You know, just real focus this season on, you know, just doing what I gotta do to, you know, impact the game for this team and um, you know, for me, just, you know, just playing with energy and, you know, just trying to uh, create extra possessions for this team and, um, you know, really just trying to, um, you know, win ball games. I think that's the most important thing, um, you know, with me being, you know, playing more on the wing now, playing the two, playing the three, uh, not too many guards or, you know, wings or anybody in this league really that boxes out so um, just you know just taking it personal um, and just trying to help the ball club out 
All right, he's averaging a double-double over his last three games, Kyle Kuzma. And I know for fans, a lot of times it's about his scoring and the consistency on the offensive end and the shooting, but he's added rebounding to his game. He's also been solid on defense, a, a lot of blocks coming over from the weak side. Um, he seems comfortable in this role, James, and that's what the team needs. And, and it's the beauty when a young player recognizes what it takes to create longevity. And that's what he's at the beginning of doing right now. He's 25, 24, 25. So he's going to peak in a year or two. You know, maybe LeBron may be gone. I don't know. Whenever that happens. And at about 28, 29, he could be dangerous. Because now he's picking up all aspects of the game. And he's understanding that. He won a championship. And I always say, when you win a championship, you don't win a championship without learning how to you know, how to prepare, how to stay disciplined in the offseason. Being a Brown, LeBron James, I'm sure he's saying, man, I'm glad I didn't get traded. Although Ingram and all those guys, they got their, you know, they got their limelight and they got, you know, money early. He's in a perfect place right now. I just love what he's doing. On the defensive end, he's amazing. And getting extra possessions and rebounds, it's, it's what he needs to be doing. We know he can score. Yeah, and, and Ali, for me, like I just feel like every game I'm, I'm watching and I'm, and I'm happy mm -hmm. for Kuz because I feel like he's making great decisions. That's what's sticking out, whether it's the extra pass or the help on defense. Um, and that, to me, shows maturity. But then I look at his numbers, and I'm like, hey, he's efficient. 40% from three right now. I know it's early. By the way, that is real. You do yeah. say that. You don't just tweet about it. You no, say it. I say it. I'm like, oh, extra pass. Like, he wouldn't have done that two years ago. But I think what it is is what we've been talking about a lot, really since the start of the bubble. His teammates have said it as well. The game is just slowing down for him. And, and you know as a former player mm -hmm. that when the game becomes so slow for you, you're able to focus in and dial in on, on various ways in which you can actually impact and help a team win. And I think for him, he realized that that jump and that leap had to come on the defensive end of the floor, doing the hustle plays, winning the hustle plays in terms of rebounding, creating extra possessions and energy. And then players are going to want to reward you. They're going to want to give you the basketball. And his confidence is already there to then step up, knock down the shots. The efficiency has been something fun to watch. And a lot of that comes from, remember, he was hurt starting last year, supposed to be the third member of this big three. And that's not how this team was built. He's watching friends and peers around the league play on bad teams but score 25 a game. Guys get paid. He had to go through some growth there, right? No question. And that's hard for a yeah. young player to do when you know you have talent. Remember, he came in here like busting out of the gates. Everyone loved him, right? Bunch of young players around him, no veterans. All rookie team. Then all of a sudden, I have to learn how to play with real men, you know, who've been there eight, nine, tens, and have won championships. That's hard to do. And go through injury. Everybody talking about third wheel. Even I, he's going to be the third guy. Once he 